This video is on isosceles triangles and the isosceles triangle theorems. And before we get to those theorems, we're going to talk about the parts of an isosceles triangle. Now remember, an isosceles triangle is a triangle that has at least two congruent sides. And those two congruent sides are called the legs of the isosceles triangle. So here we have two legs. And the third side of the isosceles triangle, the side that's not a leg, is called the base of the isosceles triangle. And then the two angles here on the base, these are called the base angles. So we have one base angle here and one base angle here. And then this third angle up here is called the vertex angle. And this point up here is called the vertex of the isosceles triangle. So these are the different parts of an isosceles triangle. And so now, using these parts that we've now named, we can talk about the isosceles triangle theorem. And the isosceles triangle theorem just says if a triangle is isosceles, then its base angles are congruent. So we have an isosceles triangle here. These angles here that are opposite the legs of the isosceles triangle, those are the base angles. So if a triangle is isosceles, we know that these base angles here must be congruent. The isosceles triangle theorem converse, well, we know how to form the converse of a theorem. We just swap the hypothesis and conclusion. So the converse of the isosceles triangle theorem says if the base angles of the triangle are congruent, then the triangle is an isosceles triangle. Now let's take a look at some problems that have to do with isosceles triangles. So example number one, I have these two triangles that are kind of connected together here in the middle. And at first it looks like I might not have enough information here to solve for x, but in fact, since these two angles I recognize as being vertical angles, I know that vertical angles are congruent, so if this angle has a measure of 2x, this angle must also have a measure of 2x. I also notice that this triangle here is an isosceles triangle because it has those two hash marks to indicate that these two sides are congruent. And I know from my isosceles triangle theorem that if a triangle is an isosceles triangle, then its base angles, that is the angles opposite the two legs of the triangle, these two base angles must be congruent. So I now have expressions for all three of the angles of this triangle, and I can use my triangle sum theorem to add those three angles together and set them equal to 180 degrees. So that's 12x equals 180. Divide both sides by 12, and I get x equals 1 equals 15. Example number two. Again, I have an isosceles triangle. Here are my two legs. Here are my two base angles. And again, I know from the isosceles triangle theorem that the base angles of an isosceles triangle are congruent, so I can set these two expressions equal to each other. 6x minus 21 must be equal to 3x, since these two base angles must be congruent. And again, I have an equation that I can solve. Let's see, let me add 21 to both sides. And let me subtract 3x from both sides. And divide both sides by 3, and I get x equals 7. So now I know what x is. Well, since I know what x is, I can take x and I can plug it back in for these two expressions. That means this angle is going to be 3 times 7. This angle is going to be 21 degrees. This angle is also going to be 21 degrees. And I know that even without doing this arithmetic here, plug it in 7, because these two angles here must be congruent. Well, if this angle is 21 and this angle is 21, 
I can again use my triangle sum theorem to solve for my last angle. So let me say, let me put this up here, y plus 21 plus 21 equals 180. y plus 42 equals 180. And I subtract 42 from both sides, and I get y equals 138. All right, now these next two problems, examples three and four, uh, use our isosceles triangle theorems, and they're maybe a little trickier, so if you want to pause the video right here and try these out on your own before you see how I go through them, then uh, you'll get a chance to see if you can work them without my help. Example number three, let's see, I've got two triangles kind of together here. This one I see is an isosceles triangle. This one is just a right triangle. So I know this is 90, this is x. Ah, and I have a linear pair here. So let's see, I can get this angle right here. 180 minus 126 is going to be, let's see, 4, it's going to be 54 degrees. So right away I know this angle is 54, so I can use my triangle sum theorem and solve for x. So let's see, x plus 90 plus 54 equals 180. X plus 144 equals 180. Subtract 144 from both sides. And that gives me X equals 6. 36. Now let's see for Y. Let's see if I cover up this part of the picture, then I've got an isosceles triangle. Here's my vertex angle right here. My two base angles are here and here, and since that's an isosceles triangle, I know that these two base angles must be congruent, so if this one has a value of y, this one must also have a value of y. And now, once again, I can use my triangle sum theorem, add up those angles, y plus y plus 126 equals 180, 2y plus 126 equals 180, subtract 126 from both sides. That gives me 2y equals 54. And I divide each side by 2, and I get y equals 27. Now, example number 4. And again, at first glance, it looks like I don't have enough information to solve for x and y, but I notice that if I cover up this part here, I've got not just an isosceles triangle, but I have an equilateral triangle. That is, these two sides are congruent, and they're also congruent to the third side. Well, again, an equilateral triangle is a particular type of isosceles triangle, which means that its base angles, let's see, so if these two sides are congruent, that means the angles opposite those sides must be congruent. And if these two sides are congruent, well, the angles opposite those sides must be congruent. So essentially what I'm saying is that for an equilateral triangle, all three of these angles have to be congruent. The only way I can have three angles be congruent and add up to 180 degrees means that each one of these angles must be 60 degrees, since 3 times 60 is 180 degrees. Well, now I know the value of each one of these three angles. Now I need to take advantage of something else that I know about my figure, which is that I've got two parallel lines here. Let me take these two parallel lines and redraw them over here. So here's my two parallel lines. And let me call this my transversal, cutting through these parallel lines. And I can see that this angle here, that's this angle right here, that's x. And this angle down here, that's this angle over here, that's 60 degrees. Well, now I can see that I have two parallel lines cut by a transversal, and my alternate interior angles must be congruent, which tells me that x then must be 60 degrees. Well, now that I know x is 60 degrees, I can use my triangle sum theorem again. x is 60, 60 plus 90 
plus y must equal 180. That's 150 plus y is 180. y then must be 30. Now you have a few more examples in your notes, so go ahead and try those on your own and we'll take a look at those tomorrow in class.